Hello everyone, my name is Joe Kunuji. Welcome to my African Music Conversations. In some of my previous videos, I mentioned the diversity of musical practices in Africa. So if you have not seen those videos, please check them out. Southern Africa is particularly rich in musical bows. These were initially hunting bows that doubled as musical self-expression instruments. And today we will be focusing on one of those bows which is popular among Kausa people. And this one is called Umkube. And my guest for today is professional musician and dancer Tabisa Dinga. So if this kind of conversation on African musical practices is something that interests you, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, leave a comment or a question, and share this video with others who might be interested. Now to Tabisa. My name is Tabisa Dinga, and I'm originally from Pumalanga. That's where I was born. And um, I come from a very musical family. From my mother's side and my father's side. My father was once a dancer. He used to dance for, for, for. He told me, once told me a story that they, they had, a, it's sort of groups of different Kosa traditions, because you get the Tembu speaking, you got the Mahlubi, and the Amabata, you know, and so forth. So they used to hold um, ceremonies where they would showcase their dances, Kosa different dances, according to the culture that they came from. So my father used to do that a lot, and I think history repeats itself in a way that I'm also a professional dancer today. I trained with Jazz Art Dance Theatre under the leadership of Alfred Henkel. So, yes, and my mother as well, he used to perform with my uncle Dizu Plakis. She used to um, be a dancer in Amampondo, the group Amampondo. So, music, it's something that I was born into. It's not something that I chose. It chose me. Because I, if I remember correctly, I wanted to be a doctor initially. I didn't want anything to do with the arts, but the arts chose me. So it was sort of a calling for me on music. And I, I've learned a lot of things through my uncle Dizu. He used to have people that came to visit over and we would play, he would teach us all these instruments from Omhube, Uhadi, Imbira, a whole lot of, of African indigenous instruments. So that's where my love from, for music began. I play Omhube, Uhadi, um, pen pipes, horns. Mbira, Nyunga Nyunga is another form of Mbira. And, um, oh, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. In Dingindingi. Oi Hap, that's a Hap right there. So, this is Umhube instrument. It's a mouth bow as well. The English people call it the mouth bow. So, Umhube is mainly played by Kosa speaking women and back in the days it was played mainly by the elderly women and they will play it in ceremonies but mostly it was a very sacred instrument as well they used to play it while to put their babies to sleep because back in the days we know that we didn't have radios and tvs and all that so this is the instrument that they used to play to, as a lullaby, for lullabies, for their babies to, to go to bed. So. I believe that it came from the Sen speaking people. And the way they used to play it, they used to strike it. They didn't use the string as well. They used a cow, cow intestines. They used to dry them up. Gut. Yes, a gut, thank you. So they used to use a gut for this part and they used to, 
to also use it as a bow and arrow for hunting. So later, as people used to, to mingle wherever they, they, they came from, so people used to mix during that time. Cult different cultures used to mix, and that's where the Kosa-speaking people saw the instrument from the Sen-speaking people. And they decided they're not going to play it like the Sen people, because the Sen people used to play it this way. So, but then the Kosa speaking people are bowing it instead of hitting, striking. So they bowing it, they this way. And the reason why it's called umkhube is because of the sound that it produces. If you can listen and can hear this, a, the friction that it makes. Well, Kosa people, they're very creative. They can create a word out of a sound that they heard, you know. So that is why this instrument is called umkhube. Yes, they also used to play it to accompany themselves. The women, when they go to the river, they used to go and fetch water and they would play this instrument on their way to, to accompany them as they used to walk very long distances. So this is the instrument that they also used. It was mainly played by only women. It, it used to be a solo expressive instrument, but then Kosa music has always been accompanied by voice and clapping. So you, you would get songs where that requires clapping and singing but mainly it's a solo instrument accompanied by voice most of the time. Yes, this instrument has evolved immensely because back in the days it used, it didn't have this tuning pad that you see right here. And this was invented because it, it People back in the days, they didn't know anything about keys and tuning and all that. Especially Kosa music, it's not about key. You don't have to be in, in key to sing, you know. You get people that sing off key and it's acceptable because what's important, what was important back then, it was the message and the healing that comes um, through or from the songs. So we know now things are different, times have evolved. So in order for people to be able to play with other musicians, my uncle uh, came up with this idea of having a tuning peg so that the instrument can be tuned to keys so that you, you, can, you can be able to play with, to jam with someone that plays a different instrument. 